Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome back to the Animal Crossing Let's Play. You are currently watching the abridged portion of this playthrough, where I cut out all the fluff and simply talk about my adventures of playing through an entire year of Animal Crossing in a summary format. If you'd rather watch the playthrough in its entirety, check out the video description for a link to a playlist that has all the episodes and stream sessions I've done raw and unedited. But if you'd rather stick around for these videos, well, just sit back and enjoy my adventures through Popstar. Monday, August 27th. Even though the mood in town is still quite somber from Maple's departure, life still moves on as we get our newest neighbor and Maple's replacement, Zoe. I guess her name could also be Zoe, but I had a teacher in high school with that exact name and she was always referred to as Zoe, so that's what I'm going with. She's a normal personality anteater and honestly, she looks pretty cool, so I look forward to getting to know her a little better. Anyway, after yesterday's change of message for the town fountain, I decided that now was the time to start looking into some guides for how to achieve the perfect town rating. I figured it was time because this was the closest I've ever gotten to getting the ultimate reward, and I really wanted to achieve my goal this time, especially since I was doing a let's play, but I was really unsure of what to do and how to go about achieving it, since the fountain wasn't really giving me any sort of direction anymore. The basic idea here is that in addition to a low weed count and no trash on the ground, we need to aim for a certain number of trees in each district that's not exempt, and exempt districts are areas like the train station, our housing residence, the museum, the lake, the fountain, and all the beach districts. Basically, any district that may prove difficult in getting the ideal tree numbers. I'll touch on this more a bit later since I still hadn't quite figured it out the full process at this point, but that's the gist of what we're aiming for. It's just really annoying that the fountain kind of just has you try and figure it out at this point with no real direction. For the rest of this day, we just had a few minor happenings. I had another very roundabout ball quest, this time for Penny, which got really annoying because I kept having the ball spawn in some really annoying locations, including at the bottom of the hill, where I'm convinced kicking it up here is almost impossible or this place where, quite literally, there's nothing you can do to obtain it, since it's literally on the edge of the river. I also found another Master Sword item, although this one was in the police station's Lost and Found, so I assume it's probably a cheap knockoff. Also, Portia performed an incredibly awesome tree dance that I hope becomes a meme. Wait, who is that? <laughs> it's like she's dancing. <laughs> Portia dance, Portia dance. Tuesday, August 28th. Katrina is back in town, and she is back with a vengeance. Why? I don't really know why. But she gave us the tripping fortune, so clearly we did something to upset her. Not much to say about this fortune, we just trip around a lot, which just makes moving around quickly very annoying. It's kind of like tripping in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, but without the added fear of Meta Knight coming to wreck your face. Anyway, aside from that, nothing much happened today. It was raining, so I tried to get some coelacanth money, and me and my stream chat just made DK rap and goofy movie references the whole time. Come on, coelacanth, take it to the fridge! Walnuts, peanuts, sea bass, bluegill, goldfish, knife jaw, gonna kick your ass. <laughs> Wednesday, August 29th. Another trip to Katrina causes all the female villagers to fall in love with me again. Heck, even Lily was really trying to get all over me when I was trying to find the money rock, right in front of her actual boyfriend, no less. I'm sorry, ladies, but I already belong to someone else. Gulliver also appeared today as well, and he actually gave us an item that wasn't a Matryoshka. That's the second time in a row he's done that, so thank God. Aside from that, though, I just worked more on the apple orchard, Really hoping for the day I get cherries and oranges soon, so I can work on others, especially now that we're so close to the perfect town message. Thursday, August 30th. Had another light neighbor day today, with not too much happening. However, I did have a huge sigh of relief when I saw who our town's next special visitor was going to be, as Gracie is finally coming to grace our town on September 1st. I was really shocked that we hadn't seen her or another guest yet, especially since we've now made it through an entire month and most of another one without them showing up. I suppose there is a possibility that I may have just missed them in passing, but I really, really doubt it. Oh well, the point is that they are coming now so we can finally see what their events are like. But yeah, I just did some neighbor interactions and light tree planting today. 
getting really annoyed that we still haven't gotten any cherries or oranges yet though, but they'll come when they come. Also, apparently Lily and Spork are still having some issues too, which is pretty unfortunate. It's honestly kind of hurting my opinion of Spork too, because Lily is such a sweet girl, and she doesn't deserve being treated that way. Friday, August 31st. We finally made it to the end of another month, but before we put August in our rearview mirror, we have a couple of things to tend to. First and foremost, we have the monthly raffle, and the results of this one were miles better than the previous month. In fact, not only did we have enough tickets to secure all three items, I feel like we also did it in less entries than we had the previous month, so luck was definitely on our side today. For reference, I think I had either 12 or 14 sets of 5 tickets, so with an amount of that much, you generally have a good shot of getting everything. However, it's still no guarantee, as I've also had even worse luck with more. I'll go over a backup strategy you can use next month if you're ever trying to aim for something in particular, or potentially everything, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, we didn't get any NES games this time, but we did get a piano, a covered wagon, and a garden pond, so some really interesting items, all things considered. There was nothing I really wanted personally, though, but thankfully these items can be repurchased in Nook's catalog once you do have them in your inventory, so if we change our minds for themes later, we'll technically always have them. I just kept them in my inventory for now and pretty much gave them away to my villagers if they wanted them. Aside from that though, I just did a little more of my normal routine and worked on my apple orchard. Cherry also buried an item, but it wasn't anything I was too interested in. Speaking of Cherry though, I did mail her another sweet letter. I swear, paranoia of her moving away really hit me hard around this point because of Maple's departure and I just really wanted to make sure she sticks around as much and as long as possible. And with that, August comes to an end in our first full month of living in Popstar since we've technically moved in 11 days after July started. Things are definitely starting to get a little more repetitive now and some of the days are getting really short as a result of this. That's just the way the cookie crumbles though. Moving into September, I did have a few goals in mind for this month. For one, with me getting so much closer to the perfect town rating, I really wanted to lock it down. So a good majority of the month was spent on that, once I had an idea of what to work towards, of course. I also wanted to showcase the island you can travel to if you have a Game Boy Advance and a connector cable to the GameCube. I had to look for this cable though, not to mention my Game Boy Advance, since it's probably been literally a decade, if not longer, since I touched any of that stuff, so I wouldn't get to that until midway through the month. And of course, with a new month, we have a few new fish and bugs to catch, and some new holidays to experience. Also still looking for those last two fossils as well, so hopefully we get those soon. But yeah, those are mostly my September goals, let's see how those go for us. Saturday, September 1st. Ended up starting late today, but since it's Saturday and I needed my KK slider fix, there was no avoiding it. However, it actually ended up working out alright for me because I managed to get quite a lot done even at this time frame. To start, we actually have a new special visitor in the form of Gracie today. While Sahara and Wendell are all about carpets and wallpapers specifically, Gracie is more about clothes and is a bit of a fashionista of sorts. However, you need to get down and dirty with your button mashing skills because she's going to have you clean her car. If you are a Mario Party veteran like myself, this should be a breeze, but if you struggle with button mashing, this could be kind of difficult. Depending on how well you do, Gracie will reward you with some clothes. If her car really sparkles and shimmers, she'll even reward you with some rare clothes that you can't get or buy anywhere else. If you get her car somewhat clean, she'll give you something much less rare and more generic. I ended up getting a tiger print, which actually looks really cool on my character, and maybe an outfit I save in my closet for future use, especially since I can't order it from the catalog. But yeah, it was a pretty solid first meeting, and now we only have one more special recurring visitor to show off now. Well, technically two, but of the ones that Officer Copper tells us about anyway. Most of the day, though, was spent on the new insects and fish that we can now catch in September. And believe it or not, I actually got all the new fish today. We have four in the form of the cherry salmon, the rainbow trout, the large char, and the regular salmon. The first three all appeared during the same time frame during the months of March through June, and then again during the months of September through November. And they appear during the times of 4am until 9am, and 4pm until 9pm. 
The cherry salmon is a small shadow size that you can find in the river. The rainbow trout is a medium shadow size that you can also find in the river. The large char can be found in the river as well, but only on the screen that has the waterfall, and will likely be near the waterfall as well. Plus, it's also a large shadow size, and a fish that can be sold for 10,000 bells, like the arapaima and arowana. The salmon is interesting because it only appears during the first half of September and only in rivers, but specifically on the part of the river that empties out into the sea, also known as the river mouth. You can find it all day, and it's a large shadow size, but surprisingly cheap despite its very limited availability. We couldn't quite get all the bugs due to the current time, but we did get three out of the five we can get in this month, and all three of these are very similar with how you acquire them, as they can be found on the ground rustling in bushes from the hours of 5pm until 8am. You have the cricket, the pine cricket, and the bell cricket. There's not a lot to say about these bugs though, as they're all very cheap and you should be able to find them all easily, through both sight and sound. Also, if you are trying to capture them all, take note of their color, as that may help you narrow down which one you are trying to find, based on the ones you already have. And with that, we're actually pretty much done and ready for music time. Some other minor things that happened were that we did get notified of this month's special holiday, the Moon Viewing, also known as Harvest Moon. And no, not the farming game. The event will happen on the 26th, around 6pm, so we'll be sure to be there. I also wrote Cherry another deep letter, still very paranoid about wanting her to stay around. Trust me, I'll stop and get over it soon, I promise. And before we start talking about the next town tune, let's talk about the previous two town tunes that were in the last video. The first one we had was from Yoshi's Island, which was the overworld theme, also the song that plays on the Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy level, and the second theme was actually the Pokemon Center theme from the Pokemon series. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Name that tune, everybody. And finally, we ended the day listening to a song from K.K. Slider, ironically named K.K. Song. And a few fun facts about this song. For one, this song is this game's inclusion of the very famous Tataka song, the one song I alluded to in our very first meeting with the canine. And two, you can only get this song by requesting it, as K.K. Slider will never pick this song for his random pick, so make sure you pick it up whenever you can. Sunday, September 2nd. We started this day with a mini heart attack as Cherry sent us a letter with no gift attached, which got me freaked out that she was moving. Thankfully though, she wasn't moving, she just responded to one of our previous letters without attaching a gift, that's all. Serves me right for sending so many letters to her, even though I sent her another one today as well. Although, to be fair, she did actually ask for this one. I also bought turnips this Sunday because the price was below 100 bells, and Officer Copper gave us the good news that the last special visitor we need to meet was coming on October 5th, so on that day we'll finally meet Crazy Red. About freaking time, dude. I also spent this day collecting the remaining two bugs that got introduced to us in September, the Red Dragonfly and the Migratory Locust. The red dragonfly is painfully easy to capture because not only is it as common as the normal dragonflies from previous months, they also come in groups of three, so it's really not hard to get them at all, as long as you're on between the hours of 8am until 7pm. The migratory locust is just on the ground, not even in bushes either, just on the ground. Really not that hard to get, just has a time frame of 8am until 5pm. And with that, we're done with fish and bugs until the next month, so yay. Monday, September 3rd. It's the first Monday in September, which means it's Labor Day, so happy Labor Day, everyone. There isn't much to say about this holiday, though. Just go into town and talk to Tornimer, and you'll be given a model of Nook's first shop, Nook's Cranny, that you can put in your house. That's really about it. Gulliver also stopped into town today, and instead of giving us a Matryoshka, he gave us a model of the Arc de Triomphe, which is pretty cool actually. Aside from that, it was a pretty uneventful day, all things considering. Tuesday, September 4th. 
I decided to take a neighbor day today, but I wouldn't say anything too eventful happened as a result of it. Although, Spork did have a truly outrageous request. He asked for a peach when he literally lives in an acre filled with peaches. I guess we can say Lily is definitely the brains of that relationship, that's for sure. Also, in much better news, we finally got a new fossil and received the Stego Tail, meaning we only have the Stego Skull remaining to complete our fossil collection. We're almost there, folks. Wednesday, September 5th. Crazy Red is finally here, our last special visitor that we can hear about through Copper, and is probably one of the more significant ones. Crazy Red is a very sneaky salesman, if it wasn't obvious due to the fact that he's a fox, and whenever he puts up his tent, he'll offer you some very exquisite and expensive items you can purchase. Red will offer you some things that you can't get anywhere else in town, and his prices will always be much higher than the standard market price, so be prepared to pay a pretty penny if there is something you want from him. Each furniture series has at least one, if not two, items that you can only get from Crazy Red, and Red will also have quite a number of paintings you need as well, so don't overlook whenever he comes to town. He also tends to only appear once a month as well, which still confuses me considering he never showed up in August. His stock wasn't too incredible this time though, but I still went ahead and bought him out just because these were all apparently really rare items. I think there's also the possibility of red selling stuff that's common too at inflated prices, but I don't know how often that can happen. I definitely wouldn't put it past the fox anyway. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about red. He opens his tent at 6pm, and I believe he stays a full 24 hours, so you have some time to scrounge the money together if you're lacking the funds to get his stock. Only if that is something you want, obviously. And if the appearance of Crazy Red wasn't exciting enough, only one day after receiving a new fossil, we actually receive another one, and the final fossil we need to complete our museum collection, the Stego Skull. And with that acquisition and donation, we have officially donated all 25 fossils in Animal Crossing, and it only took around 50 to 55 days to get them all. Given that's about one-seventh of the playthrough time, but still, there were a lot of days, especially towards the end there, where I got absolutely nothing each day. So this process can be really random with when you complete it. Now that we can start using fossils just for bell profit and nothing else. Although it is interesting that from this point on, I actually started having trouble finding fossils. I don't know if the appearance rates go down once you complete the exhibits, but there were a lot of days where I started feeling like finding two was a lucky break. Probably perception bias though. Anyway, just three more museum collections to finish, but admittedly, those three will probably take a lot longer. For the rest of the day, I just interacted with a few neighbors and wrote a few letters. I sent a letter to Bill and included a billiards table as a gift because I thought it was an appropriate thing to give him, what with his name and all. I also sent a hate letter to Monique because, yeah, I'm still mad at her. Go figure. Thursday, September 6th. And just as quickly as she moved in, Zoe the Anteater moved away. I was actually kind of disappointed that she split so soon. I wasn't as attached to her as I was to Maple, obviously, but I also feel like she didn't give me much of a chance either. Oh well, she was part of our town for a little bit of time at least. Anyway, nothing too significant happened today, but Spork did hide another item in the ground, and lo and behold, we get an amazing painting. Another one of the donatable artworks, so that increases our count to four, 11 more to go. I also wrote Portia a letter today and got a few letters back in return, including a response to the hate letter I wrote to Monique. She hated my letter, which only made me smile in the process. It was on this day that I also reached clarity in regards to the Wishing Well's Perfect Town scoring, in large part to the explanation and guidance of YouTube user Azure Knight 8, who was helping me out in chat while I was doing some tree management. Basically, the easiest way to explain this is that in your town, there are a certain number of acres that will be judged by the Fountain God, once you take out all the exempt acres, of course, which consist of the train station, your house district, lake district, museum district, well district, and all the beach districts. In my town specifically, there are 20 acres that will be judged. In each acre, if you have 12 to 14 trees, you'll be given 1 point. If you have 9 to 11 trees, or 15 through 17, you'll be given 0.5 points. 
and if you have any less than 9 or any more than 17, you'll get 0 points, as well as the message of the fountain saying that there are too few or too many trees in that one district. Your goal is to ultimately get 17 points in this process, as that number will trigger the Your Town is Perfect message at the fountain. At this point, I'm getting the Your Town is Faring Well message, which is the third best message you can get, which means even though I've been working on this for a while now, many of my districts are just recently meeting the 9 through 11 quota. This means I need to grow a few more trees in those districts to push myself up to 12 through 14. This way, I can work on a couple of districts at a time, and once I meet that number with one of them, I can replace it with one of the other acres until I eventually get the perfect message, and all acres are accounted for. Getting 12 to 14 trees in each of these 20 acres will assure me 20 points, and that's a pretty good 3 point buffer to have for the perfect town message. That way, if I start slacking on weed pulling and lose a point or two there, or if for some reason I just can't figure out a good tree layout for one of the districts, I'm still at about a 19 or 18.5, still over the 17 point requirement for a perfect town. What ultimately got me to figure this out was that I decided to start working on the lower right of my town by planting a bunch of apple trees. I initially wanted to wait until I got cherries before I started working on this area, because cherry lives down here, but since I was not getting any luck with that fruit, I figured a better use of my time since I was nearing the perfect town rating was to just plant a bunch of trees in this area anyway. That way, when I got cherries, I could just replace the apples with this new fruit by planting them in the same places. While doing this, I actually ended up triggering the too many trees message in one of the districts, and after removing just one tree, the message went back to what it was previously. This just kind of created a big eureka moment for me, where I realized all I had to do was just tree count in each district, and once I met the perfect quota in each acre, I would pretty much just be on easy street to success, as all I would need to do from that point on is just maintain the balance for two in-game weeks. This preparation would still take a few days to get to that point, but my goal of getting the ultimate fountain reward before the end of September was pretty much in my reach, and I was looking forward to moving forward with it. Friday, September 7th. This day is kind of a continuation of the previous day in a multitude of ways. First, we get our newest neighbor Dina, a normal personality duck who likes to say the word sugar bill. I'm not sure how to feel about her yet though, as it's still early, but I feel like I'm getting pretty consistent pom-pom vibes with her, so hopefully she sticks around a lot longer than what pom-pom did, and especially longer than what Zoe did. I wrote her a letter welcoming her to the village, and gave her a nice watermelon table as well. Maybe this letter will at least keep her around a bit longer, and will prevent her from being the next move out. And also, as a continuation of the previous day as well, I did a little more work on some of my acres, making sure I met the 12 to 14 tree quota I talked about in the previous day. In just the few acres I worked on, my fountain message already changed to the next level, saying I had a satisfactory level of greenery in my town, the next level down from perfect. Only a few more days of progress and we should finally meet that perfect rating. That wasn't the only W we experienced today though, as Tom Nook once again announced a really nice turnip price of over 700 bells. And thankfully, since I did purchase turnips this past week, I was able to take advantage and get a nice payout from it. Now, since I've already paid off my house loans, the extra money won't exactly go to anything in particular but I put it in my post office savings in an effort to build a nice little nest egg if I ever wanted to splurge on anything. Also, in a very rare win from Caesar, he just randomly decided to give me a rocket, one of the furniture items from the space theme that I've been collecting for, so that was nice. I also got a letter back from Portia, and I was very confused. On the one hand, it seemed like she liked the letter because she called me her hero, but on the other hand, she said I was mean. Then she started talking about ping pong? Yeah, I'm not really sure what her angle is here, and I don't think I ever will understand. Guess the only course of action is just to keep moving forward, huh? Saturday, September 8th. Still working on that perfect rating, but starting to solidify the ideal tree numbers in a number of districts, so it's feeling very much in reach for me. As far as other interactions, our newest neighbor Dina gave us a pitfall seed, which I unhesitantly used on Monique again. 
I even gave her a few whacks with the bug catching net as well, just to show that little interaction. And just to be clear, I do not support animal abuse, that's easily one of the worst things a person can do, so please don't see these actions as that. I would never do anything that would hurt an actual animal, as that would be absolutely despicable and it makes me sick thinking about it. Monique's not even a real animal anyway, just game data that vandalized my house and stole money from me. My girl Cherry also had a very interesting request for me too, when she asked me if she could have a Cherry, her namesake. Unfortunately, I still don't have any Cherries in my town yet, but I wondered if this was maybe a hint that my other villagers could offer me a Cherry if I kept talking to them. Nothing really happened though, but this request did get me thinking on those lines. Anyway, onto the music. It's probably another easy one, but I did go outside the box a little this time, compared to my usual town tune sources. Name that tune. And for KK Slider, we actually listened to another one of his request only songs. So, we requested his famous song two days ago. Sunday, September 9th. I continue to get prepared for the perfect town rating, constantly checking my tree numbers and all the districts in town, but I also decide to get prepared for another happening that I'll indulge in a couple of days, as I think I'm finally going to take a trip to the tropical island this week. I'll talk more about this when I actually head on over there, but to get prepared I actually started buying out Nook's furniture items, as there is a very interesting thing you can do when you go to the island involving furniture. But again, I'll talk about that then, so just take my word for it for now. Wendell also visited my town today, so I got another rare wallpaper from him, and since it was Sunday, of course I got some turnips as well, especially since the price was only 80 bells. Another pitfall was buried in town today too, so I think we all know what I did with it. Doing it with absolutely zero remorse in the process. Monday, September 10th. I finish up the tree counting and due to my diligent work in my lower districts in the past couple of weeks, I check the town fountain and am finally graced with the message I've been waiting for. The town of Popstar finally has a perfect living condition. The most tedious part of this process has finally been completed, but we're still not quite done. Now we actually need to wait two weeks and maintain these conditions. Maintaining this is honestly not too hard though. As long as we keep the ideal tree numbers we currently have at this point forward, all we need to do is pull weeds whenever we see them. And even then, I wouldn't say you need to be perfect with pulling weeds. As long as the town doesn't get completely overgrown with them, you should still be in good shape for this. And of course, don't leave any trash on the ground either, as that can also take your progress on this front. Also, another fun fact for weeds, if you have a bunch of flowers in a district with weeds, the flowers will actually act as a counterbalance to them, where if you have more flowers than weeds, you won't actually receive any negative effects, even if you have a lot of them, so you can use this info to your advantage as well. Still though, if you see a weed, just pull it out. It's that easy after all. Also, we got a rather surprising happening with Monique today. After a few weeks of slandering her name, Monique attempts to actually go on a bit of a redemption arc when she gives us a painting for delivering an item to her. Wow, I can't believe she's actually trying to be generous and make a change for the better. Could this be it? Could this be the extremely rare once in a lifetime Monique W? No, we already hadn't donated this painting to the museum already. Still a Monique L. Sorry folks. That will do it for another Animal Crossing episode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you for the next one. Reminder that you can find links in the video description for the unedited recording sessions of this playthrough, as well as individual links to the streams in particular that featured the days covered in this episode summary. Until we meet again, this has been Slim Kirby, and I'll see you guys next time. Later folks.